He is deserving. How many of us know that he is deserving? Oh, of all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. How many of us know you got to fight the good fight of faith? Hallelujah. You got to lay hold. Lay hold on this eternal life. Hallelujah. It's, it's, you win. You win. Amen. Amen. There is no losing. We win. Hallelujah. We certainly thank God for this day and for all that he has done and all that he is doing. God has made all the provisions for us. He really has. And he has set the table before us. He's, he's really prepared a table before us in the very presence of our enemies. Now he has done that. Everything that you need to win has already been prepared. It's waiting. It's for you. It, now, this is the truth. David prophesied about this. That's, the 23rd Psalm is a, is a prophetic word for your day. You're living that. He has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And they can't do anything about it. Yeah. He said, I've given unto you all things that pertain to life and godliness. There it is. Table is set. Ha! Not only can the devil can't do nothing about it, he can't even come and eat. Ha! Dear. He can, all he got to do is just bloat while I eat. Hallelujah. No, really, that's the truth. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. And we have the, we got the Holy Ghost too. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. David said, my cup's run over. Yes. Well, the new covenant said, out of my innermost being flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Holy Ghost, you know. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 You need to look like you're full of the Holy Ghost. You need to act like you're full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. See, that's where your victory is. See, if I'm looking all forlorn, long-faced, if I'm looking like that, well, you know me right away. I'm half, half the battle. I've lost half the battle right there. Because the enemy see you looking like that. He, oh, yeah. He's going through. I'm going to help him stay there. You see what I mean? No, no. The devil, don't, the only thing he know, the only thing the devil knows about me is that I'm always doing well. That's all he knows about me is that I'm always doing well, cause I look like it, I act like it. Yeah, amen. But but you know you practice that. I, I learned that. God taught me that. God taught me how to lay hold on eternal life. He taught me how to fight. He taught me how to live. He taught me. He told me. He showed me, you know, those, those holes that your adversary put on you that, that caused you to buckle. So I said, no, I don't do that. I don't do no. No, I'm walking in victory. I fight. I know how to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which I've been called. I'm walking in my calling. See, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm walking in failure, that's not my calling. I was not called to fail. I was called to win. No, really, that, that's the truth. And so that's what, I, that's what I choose to do. So I'm walking in my calling. I was called to win. No, no, no defeat in me. There is no defeat. So I want you to be encouraged and know that. You know what I mean? You're... you're your victory, really, it, it begins with your demeanor, your, your attitude toward it, your attitude toward victory. What kind of attitude you got? Well, I, bless God, I got a winning attitude. You, you understand? I'm not really. I'm telling you. I, I, listen, I, I've been walking this a while. Not too long, but I've been out here a little while. And I found out, dear God, your, 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 your demeanor is going to determine a whole lot how you come out the other end. You know, you look, you ever, you ever see the, you know, I like to watch a little boxing there once in a while. 
You know what I mean? And you know, yo, you look at that old boy, you know what I mean? He coming there dragging and jumping and looking. He ain't going to win. He going to lose. But, man, you got a man come out there with him, man. He walking. I mean, he just run. He can't wait for the bell to ring. Yes, yes. That's right. He look like he going to win. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, got, you and I got to look like we win. We got to look like winners. Hallelujah. Look like winners. Act like winners. Talk like a winner. Yeah, yeah, because let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you know, the world needs you. The world needs you. The, I'm telling you, the only, you are the only thing the world has. You are the only thing that they have. Do you, you know, if you turn all the lights out in here, we'd be feeling around in the dark. Couldn't see the thing. Well, you know what you are? You are the light of the world. If, the, if, yes, if, 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 if you turn off, everybody's in the dark. No, the world needs you. The world need you. You, you. you know, you really need to understand that. You know, so don't be dragging around talking about, ah. no, 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 no. No, no, they don't need that. That's what they're doing. They don't need that. They need somebody that's winning. They want somebody they can have confidence in. They want somebody that's in charge. That's what they're looking for. The world is looking for somebody that's in charge. They're looking for winners. Hallelujah. That's what I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm blessed God. I'm a winner. And I just want to encourage you to that. I just want to encourage you to that because we are winners together. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and see what I know God got a good word for us. Praise God. I feed on the manna of God from on high. Amen. Feed on his manna. Feeding from the, um, from the manner of God that's from above. Hallelujah. Amen. What is this journey? It's a good journey. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. We're talking about maintaining a holy standard. Maintaining a holy standard, or you can say maintain a winning standard. The one that wins. We, we have to do that one way or the other. I'm not losing. I, I did, I'm, well, that's, I've just decided that I'm not losing. I'm not losing. I'm not losing. Now, we're just going to play until I win because I'm not losing. You know what I mean? We're gonna, we, we know, we, we know, I'm not losing. If I get to take my ball back and go home, we not, I'm not losing. I'm not losing. I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm not. I'm only, I'm only winning. I'm only, I'm only winning because Jesus, Jesus is my victor. He is already at the finish line beckoning me on. God. The Bible talks about a great cloud of witnesses uh-huh. in the bandstands of heaven yes. mm-hmm. that has gone before us. Uh-huh. Encourage. You ever go to those races? I, I go sometimes. My kids, grandkids, they run camera. See, and, they, you know, they're everybody on the sideline hollering. Come on, come on, Joe. Come on, come on, come on. You know what I mean? Get encouraging them, you know. And then, you know, they, 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 they get it. They, they, you know, they can get, you know what I mean? But, but, uh, but, but, but you need somebody to encourage you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need some encouragement. You need to, because, you know, this is, this is a race. And God is my encouragement. He is my, he is, Jesus is at the finish. Sitting down. I heard him say it. It is finished. He is at the right hand of honor of the Father, beckoning to me and saying, I have a seat for you. Keep running patiently. Finish the race. Overcome. You can sit with me in my throne. I ran, and I'm at the end. I'm sitting with my Father in his throne you win, you overcome, you sit with me in my throne as I overcame and I'm set down Amen. with my Father in his throne. Amen. Now, you can, you, can, you can make that real for you or you can just make a little religion out of it. I choose, it's re- to me, that's real. Amen. To me, that's real. I got one thing on my mind, doing what God Praise called me to God. do. Yeah. Amen. That's my focus. I'm fine. Think about nothing. I don't have time for nothing else. 
I really don't. I don't, I don't have time for foolishness. I don't have time. I don't have time for. I don't have time for nothing else. The only thing I want to do is whatever God wants me to do. My business is God's business. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I act like that. I'm in Christ. I'm in him and he's in me. Ain't but, two, ain't but one of us. Ain't no two of us. If he's, if he's, if he's a winner, then I'm a winner. I'm not, and there's no such thing as Jesus being a winner and I'm a loser. Well, then where, where are you in Christ? We brag about that. We quote it all the time. Right. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. Amen. I agree with you. You're absolutely right. Well, then act like you're in Christ. Amen. Talk like you're in Christ. Jesus. Win like you're in Christ. Oh. You, you oh. want to see this? This is real. I could give a hoot and a holler for religion, but well, relationship with Jesus Christ, that's, my, that's what I want. See, religion, all religion is just, just say things. You know, it's nice. You know, quote stuff and say, you know what I mean? And then everybody go home and, and back to the grind. Mm-mm. 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 A relationship is, I, no, I live this. I live this. I live this. This is my life. I am in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, all now. things are of God. Now. Now. So I got to be winning. Because if I say now all things are of God and I'm defeated, wow. is that God? No. 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 I'm telling you. Verse 18 said, now all things are of God. So I should be looking and acting like I'm in Christ, talking like he talked. The same thing that Jesus say, I say. The same thing I say, he say. I say I win, he say I win. He say I'm healed, I say I'm healed. You can't separate us. You can't split me and Jesus. I'm not going to say anything he won't say. I'm not going to be anything that he's not. Whatever, I, whatever he is, that's what I am. Why? Because I'm in him. You got you to get a hold of that. You got to get a revelation of that. You got you to get a revelation of that. You got to keep hearing. That's why I keep saying it all the time. So you can get it. You know, because I see some people, some people creep around, they're, like, ah, they're just dragging, well, just keep dragging. If you keep listening, you'll get it. Glory to God. You, you'll come alive. Amen. The life of God inside of you will make you alive. Amen. You won't be dragging around and, 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 and just fiddling around and all that. Alive in Christ Jesus. Being what God's called you to be. Being that light. God loves the world. He so loved the world, he gave Jesus to die. Yes. And don't want not a single soul lost. Yes. 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 And he has placed you out there, a Thank light, you, and he didn't Jesus. put you under no bush. Mm. He Jesus. put you on a hill. Yes. That's, he, that's why I live boldly. I live bold. I do. I live bold. I don't hide. I do not hide. He did it. I live bold. He didn't put me out. He lit me and didn't put me on no bush. No. Let your light so shine before men. That's right. Amen. You walking and ducking and hiding. And what are you doing? <laughs> Let your light. You are the light. Amen. You see, you understand lights. You understand lights. Yeah. Now you turn them lights off, it's dark in here. It's dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you are the light of the world. And wherever you are, somebody ought to be able to see something. <coughs> Amen. 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 If you just as blind as the ones around you, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. No, they need you. Yeah. Yeah. The world needs you because you are the light. You are the one, you're, you're the one to help them to see. So b brighten up. Brighten up, dear Lord. Brighten up. <laughs> brighten up. And be, you know, crank it up. You don't know, you're not a 25 watt. You ought to be up at least to 75 by now. Amen. 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 Just, you know, come on. You, you understand what we're talking about here? Amen. This is what we have. This is our time. I'm telling you, this is the church's finest hour. I believe for my, in my, in my generation, in my generation, I believe that I'm, we're, I'm in the finest hour of my generation. I really believe that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm needed. God is desired and needed more in this hour. 
It's, actually, he is necessary. He is necessary for you in this hour. Otherwise, you, you, because I, I see people, dear God, I see people are, uh, whew, people are, they're sad. They're, they're, I'm telling you, people are sad. They're, they're sad. The people are sad. I'm telling you, and they don't know it. But you are the light of the world. How do we maintain our stability? How do we maintain our brightness in such darkness? It's by the spirit of the living God, knowing who you are. That's how we're going to maintain. That's how we're going to maintain it. There's some things that you need to know. There's some things that you need to know. You need to know, one number one, you need to know the will of God for you life, your life. You need to know that. You don't need to be thinking about it. You don't need to be reading about it. You need to know it. You need to know the will of God. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's look at this. Let's pick up here. Second Peter. Chapter 3. Verse number 9. What am I what we said? Knowing you gotta know. You gotta know what does God what does God say? What is his will? What is his desire? In this very hour now, let's let's we're talking about application. We're not talking about religion, we're talking about application. Right. How am I to be applied to the culture? I'm like, you know, you're you're like you're like ketchup, a mustard to the to the sandwich. You, you know what I mean? Yes. You gotta put some on it to make it taste like something. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's what you are. No, really, that's what you are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You are, the, you, are, you are the one that God has placed here. Now, you got to see this. You and I are the ones that God has placed here on this earth in this hour to be the light, to be the taste for the sandwich. Uh -huh. you, you, you're that. You, you're it. You're the one that's going to allow for people to get through yeah. this hour. Yeah. You're it. And if you don't understand your value, see, this is why the devil is always trying to devalue you and try to make you think that you are not, that you're not anything. Mm -mm. That's a trick. It's a trick. That's a trick to be, de that's why he always trying to put you under condemnation. God said, there is no condemnation in you. Amen. Amen. But the same devil come out here try to point the finger and put you on the corner. What is he trying to do? He's trying to de degrade you. He's trying to reduce you so that you don't be effective. But you got to know. You got to know. You got to know. Because if you, if you don't know who you are, you just kind of drag on through and you won't even know. You won't even know his day. You won't. That's why it's so important to stay close to God. Stay prayed up. Keep this word before your eyes. Amen. Always have a word. Right. Always have a word. Right. Always have a word. Always have a word. Amen. 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 To declare your position. Always, always, always. 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 Knowing. You got to know. You got to know. You got to know the heart of God. You got to know the, 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 the desire of God. Because Jesus sent us the way he was sent. He says, the Father sent me, that's the way I'm sending you. I know the Father. Jesus came in the Bible said, Jesus is the express image of God's person. That's what he is. He knows the heart of the Father. He knows the will of the Father. That's what he is here to do. He made it very clear. I'm not here to do my will, but the will of my Father. And so he got to, he's got to know the will of the Father in order to do the will of the Father. You hear what I'm saying? If you and I don't know the will of the Father, then we can't do the will of the Father. And Jesus made it very clear over there in John. He said, I'm sending you the same way I was sent. That's the way I'm sending you. The same way that I was sent, I'm sending you. And we need to understand that. We need to understand the reality of our calling. I'm not just, I'm not just hanging out. Amen. I'm God's man on this earth. Amen. I'm a, I represent, I'm an ambassador from heaven. That's right. That's right. 
Amen. Representing the kingdom. Yes, sir. Lighting the way. Yes. Bringing people to Jesus. God. That's what I'm. That's what. That's what this whole thing is about. That's why I don't. 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 Don't get. Don't get distracted. Don't. Don't. Don't be distracted, please. Don't be distracted by the cares of this world and the things that's going on around you and lose, lose sight of who you really are. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I, the, the, most, the most important thing in my life is to do the will of God. That, that's what I'm interested. That's, that's my number one interest. My number one interest. You say, how did you get like that? I don't know. I just, I just got up one day and that's where I was. You grow into this. That's what God called growing in the grace, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You don't know when it happened. You don't even know when you stopped cussing. All of a sudden you woke up there and you wasn't cussing anymore. When did that happen? I don't know. I just grew into that. You, you, I mean, you probably know when you stopped smoking pot because that's when you stopped ducking and hiding. You, know, you follow what I'm saying? You know, my, my point is that God grew you. Yes. And he'll continue to grow you and develop you continually. Right. Right. I said, you, know, you'll be, you don't need to be worrying about that. And anywhere that you have not developed to, don't worry about it. Amen. You just operate where you have come to. There's a, listen, wherever you are, I guarantee you it's enough to keep you busy 24-7. Amen. Amen. Don't need to be worrying about where you're not. How are you haven't gone yet? Amen. You don't need to be worried about what you don't know. Because right. you can do absolutely nothing about what you don't know. Yeah. You're only required to operate in what you know. Amen. You don't have to worry. Don't worry about what you don't know. And don't let nobody put you under condemnation about what you don't know. Yeah. They got a problem too. That's it. Yeah. You, understand what, you understand what I'm saying? But you be faithful. You be faithful. You be faithful in that which you know. And if you are faithful over a little, you can be, you'll, you'll be applied much to you. You'll be faithful over much. That's right. That's right. But if, you hide the, if you're not faithful over the one talent, huh. you're going to lose it. Yeah, give it up. Wow. You're going to lose it. All that stuff is the teaching. That's teaching for you. God, God taught us all that stuff. Be faithful with the one. Be faithful right where you are. Be faithful. Be faithful right where you are. Be faithful right where you are. Whatever, whatever, wherever you are, be faithful right there. If you can't, if you can't, you know, oh, you said he's an usher and he can't be on church on time as an usher. You know, he's never going to preach. Right, right, right. Yeah. Never, he ain't never going to, never, no. Yeah. Right. He can't even be on time as an usher. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Probably going to lose that position. Because the guy had one talent that buried it, he, got, he lost that. He lost wow. So he's back out in the cold. You want to be back out in the cold or you want to grow? You want to excel. You want to go, I want to go forward. Amen. Amen. I want to increase. Glory to God. I want to be faithful yes. to what God's given to me to do. Yes. I want to be productive. I want to be effective Amen. in what God's called me to do. Right. And so I start right where I am. I start right where I am. I start right where I am. God, I want to be faithful right, right here. And then he'll, he'll, move me, he'll move me forward. That's the, way, that's the way this thing works. But understanding the will of God will motivate you when you know the heart of God because now you are one with him and you know his heart. You know his heart. And so you want to you wanna fulfill the calling that he's placed on you because you know his heart. You got to know the will of God, knowing the will of God. Now, I told you to turn to first, second Peter, right? Yeah. Second Peter three, nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse number nine. Listen, and I'm reading this from the NLT. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He has been patient for your sake. And he's about to tell us why he's being patient. We're talking about, you are talking about your faithfulness in, your present, in this present culture. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about not fainting, not wringing your hands saying, dear God, what are we going to do? That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Amen. But you're supposed to know the will of God. 
so you can apply yourself to the calling that you've been placed in. Place in you. And so God is being patient for our sake. He does not, listen, here's the key. Why, here's why he is patient. Because he does not want anyone to be destroyed. Amen. That is the heart of God. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. God doesn't want anyone destroyed. Wow. Now watch this. Watch this. Are you in Christ? Yeah. Then if you're in Christ, then the will of God is your will. You're conformed to his because I'm in him, and that's his will. So now his will becomes my will. Do you, do you see how this works? See, watch this. God is love. Well, as a child of God, love is not up for discussion. It's settled. And in fact, God said, listen, don't, don't come telling me about how much you love me and you can't love them, you see. Don't even start that. So God, so if I'm in Christ and God is love, what else can I be? Please come, you got to get a hold, you got to get a hold of this. You got you to come out of the flesh and come over here in the spirit world where you belong. Yeah. If God is love mm -hmm. and I am in Christ, then what else can I be but love? I can be nothing else. If I'm anything other than love, then I'm, I miss something somewhere. And so if it is the will of God to be patient and long-suffering, then I'm in Christ. I take on the same nature. I'm patient with people. Wow. I'm not short. I've never had it up to here. Right, right, I'm right. done with that. Yeah, yeah. I have graduated from having it, having have had it up to here. <laughs> and I'm done. I know you never heard no Christian say that. <laughs> but there are some that, are, that have had it. I have had it. Yeah. And I am done. Done. You belong to another group, not this one. No, really? No, 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 no. You're not, you can't be in Christ. You cannot. If you're done, if you've had it, no patience, no tolerance, no nothing, you are not in Christ. Because if I'm in Christ, that's the way he is. God Listen, I, I, listen, listen. The Lord is, is, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. Mm -hmm. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed. Wow. But wants everyone to to repent. You, if you and I are in Christ, that is exactly the way my portfolio read. Mine read the identical same way. It has to. If I'm in Christ. Do you understand? You, you, do you see what we're talking about here? Do you see how we have played church and played this game and, and just playing religion and just, just out there living in the flesh calling yourself a Christian? No. No, those days are, and, and in fact, the time that you're in right now is going to determine where you are. Because you've been out there just playing, got a little religion, saying that you're in Christ, but living in the flesh is going to show. The very hour that we are in right now is going to skin you. This very hour that we're in right now with all, all the mess that's going on, everybody fainting and having fits, I'm just cruising. <laughs> the people are frightened and fit. People are frightened, fearful. I'm telling you, I'm out in the public. I walked in shop right today. Watch this, watch this. 
Watch this. Now, you know over in this section where all of the towels and toilet paper and all that stuff is. Anybody go to shop right today? You know what I'm talking about. It's always stuff stacked up everywhere. There wasn't a roll of toilet paper to be found in the store. I said, dear Lord, what is wrong with these people? I met another brother. We were just, we were just fellowshipping in our, he said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> these people are scared to death. I don't know what's wrong with them. Yes, what are you going to do with solid paper? <laughs> what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Yeah, yeah. You, do you think I'm kidding? No, no. Hey, can you imagine? Anybody, can you imagine no toilet paper in shop, right? Not a roll to be seen. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, all that. Well, that's big, did it? Yeah. Yeah, no soap at it, everything. Mask. <laughs> and I was trying to figure, we were trying to figure out what you're going to do with the toilet paper. But well, why? I, I don't know. But my, my point is, it's, the, it's demonic fear for the fear that's coming on the earth. It's all fear. It's not even rational. I don't know, I don't know why you would do, get taught up here. I don't, I'm still don't trying to figure that one out. What are you going to do with it? What are you hoarding it for? What? Because if you... <laughs> I could see if it wasn't no food. But it was plenty of food and no toilet paper. If you don't eat food, you don't need no toilet paper. Come on. We ain't going to do a toilet paper. They left the food down in the store, left the store full of food, and took the toilet paper home. I'm, I'm trying to show you how irrational the devil is. There's nothing rational about him. And people are just, they're just fearful. It doesn't even make sense. I know it. That's my point in telling them. These people need you and I. They need us. They need you. They need you to balance the equation. But God has told us, God told us that this was going to happen. But that's why I say this is the church's finest hour. And now, but if you had just got religion and you just going to church playing games on Sunday morning, then you're going to go right down with the bunch. Right. Now I'm telling you, the only people that's going to navigate through this is people that are walking by faith. Amen. People that are living by faith. They are going to be the only ones that's going to finish the race. I'm telling you. And so I would, that's why I'm telling you. You better get in here. You got to get, 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 your, get your faith on. Get your faith on. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because you just can't say I'm not going to be scared. It don't, fear don't work that way. Right, right. The only thing that drives fear out is faith. That's right. That's right. You cannot intellectually say I'm not going to be afraid. Mm. That won't work. That won't work. That devil will scare the tar right out of you. Your mind is no match for the spirit of fear. That's right. Don't forget that. Your mind is no match for the spirit of fear. The only thing that fear respects is faith in God's word. And so if you're not operating in the, in, in the faith of God's word, Fear will consume you, and your heart will fail you for fear that's before your eyes. Jesus already told us that. I read it to you. People, men's hearts are going to fail them. This, in this, this is the hour. This is the hour that he's talking to. This is the hour, people. And the hearts of men, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. No, no, really. See, and you see, here's my, th my, here's my take. I don't want to wait 
to, you know, I, I don't want to wait to, 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 to go, you know, to, 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 to I don't want to wait till I need something to go get it. Now, if I, if I got, a, if I got a boxing match tonight, I'm not going to wait till today to practice Amen. and train. Now I'm going to lose. And I say this, you know, I mean, if, if you're waiting, if you, you, if you waiting for the fear to come before you try to go find faith, uh, you're a little late. You're a little late. Because faith has to develop in you. Yes. Faith grows. You know, you know God didn't say faith, come, faith miraculously show up. No, he didn't say that. Faith comes by hearing. And the scripture says grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You've got to grow in this. And so you don't wait for disaster to start believing you were you just that's why that's why I'm, I'm always preaching i've been preaching i just keep preaching it been preaching faith from day one get to stay in the word of god get on your knees stay in the word of god make it a way of life 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 get on your knees quit quit fussing and fighting and get on your get on there before god but you, but you got but you see my point is that this is the time for us to shine and if you're not shining you're scared too. Then they're not coming to you. They're not coming to you because you're just like they are. They want somebody that, that's in charge. They want somebody. They want. They want someone that's in charge. They want someone that's not scared of the situation. They want somebody that's out bold and speaking forth life. Glory to God. They don't, they're, not, they're not looking for someone that's hiding like they are. And full of fear like that. They're not looking for that. Because people, listen, I'm trying to tell you, I'm not talking about something for next, that's going on next week. I'm talking about what's going on right now as we speak. The fulfillment of this word that Jesus spoke to us is right now. And she ain't letting up. You understand? You understand what you understand what see? But, but I don't care. You see, when it's raining, it don't bother me. I'm in the house. When it's cold and snowing, I'm not upset. I'm in the house with the heat on and plenty of gas. That's right. That's you, you understand? I'm not, I'm not moving. It don't bother me. Listen, don't it, this mess that's going on don't bother me in the least. I'm full of Jesus. I'm full of Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't bother me. Amen. I'm comfortable. Amen. Don't you see? That's what God said in his word. He said, you'll escape this because you're in Christ. Amen. Jesus is not going through this mess. That's right. He's not going through anything this mess is going on. Why? Because, well, he's not, Jesus is not going through it. Guess who else is not going through it? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. People, back in the day, people wondered about, I wonder if we're going to have to go through the tribulation. I could answer that with one question. Is Jesus? But if Jesus is not, then I'm not either. Glory. Well, come on. You mean, you mean to tell me that God's going to take me out of Jesus to put me through a tribulation and Jesus ain't going through it? Oh, come on. You get some sense. Glory to God. Could be right. No. Once you are in Christ, am I coming out of Christ ever again? No. 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 I'm in Christ forever. Amen. I will never be separated from him again. And wherever he is, there I am also. Praise God. You understand? You understand? You understand? Yes, sir. You see, and where, where, where it doesn't matter. See, if I'm in Christ, wherever he goes, nothing can do me any harm anyway. Amen. Nothing can hurt, nothing can hurt me. Amen. Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing. No matter where I go, what environment that I'm in. Jesus is in the middle of a fiery furnace. Heated seven times hotter than it's normally heated. And he is chilling. Them boys that was in there with him, they chilling too. That's a picture of you and I being in Christ today. They chilling. If you don't think they were chilling, when they, when they come out, they were just as clean as a whistle. They didn't have no smoke smell on them. Why? Because they were in Christ. In Christ. Remember the old, 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 old
So we put three in, but I see four. Who that four with in there? We have four guys. That's Jesus. So it don't matter. So, so you're in the middle of a fire of furnace. So what difference does it make with Christ? So you're in the middle of a catastrophe. What difference does it make? I'm in Christ. Do you understand that? I mean, Christ, I mean, it makes no difference. I mean, Christ, I don't care whatever, whatever happened. I'm fine. Why? Because I am in Christ. Better understand that. This is not a game. This is not something that's in the future. Now are we sons of God. Now. 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 And so what I'm trying to help us to do is that I'm trying to help us to develop and walk this out because we, this light, we are the, we are the salvation for the world. And I know this, that God doesn't want any of them lost. And they're going to run on their own until they run out of gas, and they're not they're going to be long. They're going to run. Listen to me. You hear me good now. They're going to, they're going to keep trying to run this thing until they run out of gas. And as soon as they run out of gas, they're going to be breaking your door down. It's not the first time this happened. It's not the first time this happened. This ass is in the past. They'll be breaking the church doors down. Oh, where are you at? Where, where the Christians at? Where, 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 can you help me? Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, come on. I'm still here, I'm still here. Right. You, do you understand what we're talking about here? I'm not talking about something that's in the future. I'm talking about R A T right now. Right now, right now. Now. Right you understand? Now. You understand where we are? But but see 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 if we're not careful, we'll sleep. We'll be still asleep. We'll stay asleep. I'm trying to wake the church up. I'm trying to, I'm, trying to just, I'm just, I'm sounding the alarm, Amen. trying to get us awake yes. and get us up and get some clothes on by the time we get out of here right. and get this thing done, get this thing done, <laughs> get, be, be, be ready because this is where we are. This, 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 is, this is where we are. But now, as we understand the will of God, the will of God is for everyone to be saved. And this is a this is the driving force behind what we're talking about. In the middle of everything that's going on, God's will. See, let me read it again. Let me read this to you again because it's so important. It's so it's so vitally important. No, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Now. I wish that we're all going to repent. I, I wish that there are some going to repent. But then there are some going to ride it out. And that's the sad part about this. The sad thing about this. Now listen to this. this, is, this here's, a, here's a picture of some of the stuff that, that you can be, be start expecting. Here's, you're going to see this. Revelation chapter 16. Let's pick up at verse number 7. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Now listen to this. Listen to this. this is what happened in the, midst of, in the middle of, of chaos. Here's what happens in the middle of chaos. And men were scorched. Men will be, will suffer the results of the chaos. You understand this? They'll suffer the results of it. And they will blaspheme the name of God, who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. You see that? There are those that's going to write it and will not. They, they won't, they won't, they won't, they, 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 they'll, they'll, they'll curse God. But there are some that's going, to, that's going to turn to God. There are some. See, 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 we, we, we're waiting. We, we, either we read the Bible with it, it happened in the past, 
or we read the Bible, it's some way in the future. Today, already everything nice happened today. No, 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 no. Right now. No, you, no, you, you, you. Well, if you, had, if you can't see now, you, you need some glasses. No, it's right now. It's right now that the, that you're seeing that you're going to see the turmoil. You're going to see the stirring. I, I saw it. I was, I was out in the general public today, and I, I saw the condition of the just the local, local general public. Have mercy. I don't know what's going on in these big cities. I don't want to go near there. But this is it. We in the, we're supposed to be laid back country folk. <laughs> these people just panicking. And they're just getting started. They're just getting started. My question, what, what are you going to do? See, you got to know what you're going to do and where, you, where are you going to, where, where do you stand? Are you rolling with the punch? Or are you going to stand and be a light and a support and, an un, and to undergird and minister the gospel? Because, see, we know the will of God. We know the will of God. God is not trying to drive anybody away from him. That's why I say it's important for us to know the will of God. That's why I keep emphasizing the will of God. The will of God is for everyone to come to him. Amen. And that is the, exactly the way you and I operate through this. Our own heads are above drowning water, and the only thing we're going to do throughout this whole thing is try to rescue. Salvage. Because now, whatever the will of God is, that's my will. I'm not willing that you should perish. I'm not willing that any should perish. I got a call, I got a call the other night to the hospital. Lady, I don't know who she was. They, they called me. And uh, I, they, she lady dying. She said, she said well, come, go do something. Who is she? I don't know who she is. I don't know her name. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Where you walk into a hospital room and you meet four, pe three people that's just living and one that's dying. And you don't know none of them. First time you've seen all of them. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to do what God said do. You either, you either forgive them or, 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 or leave them like they are. He said, if you forgive them, they're forgiven. If you, if you, if you don't forgive them, they won't be. Right, right, right. I set them free, gave them to Jesus, and come on out and went on home. Amen. Because that's what God's telling us to do. Amen. See, people, I'm telling you, this is the hour. This is the hour that you are either going to shine or you're going under. You're going to have to prove who you say you are because your opportunity is there. Opportunities are there. And you're going to, you, listen, you, you're, out, you, you, you're going to have to do this. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, God's already qualified you to tell you what to do. Jesus said, I'm sending you the same way the Father sent me. Not only am I sending you, but I'm giving you authority as you go, and you have to exercise this authority. Let me tell you something. These scriptures is okay to read, but the day is coming when you're going to have to exercise these. Amen. You hear me good. Uh, listen, I, I know what I'm talking about because I'm not. <laughs> listen, listen, watch this. Like, oh, oh dear God. And back, off, back off it if you want to. Jesus. Listen to this. Listen to this. See, 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 people, I, I don't know. I, just, you're not going to just go to school all the time. You're going to have to finish and go get a job. Mm -hmm. And the time now is for us to have a job. All right. No, no, no. We, you know, we, we, you know, no, you, you, what you, you, what you mean going to school all your life? What do you mean? No. When are you going to finish and go get a job? We've been reading about reading, 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 going to school, reading, reading, reading. Well, when are you going to quit reading and go do what God said do? Right. You've got to recognize this. The hour has come Amen. for you to leave the classroom and hit the streets. Amen. Praise God. Now listen to this. This instruction is from the head. When Jesus finished, this is the final instructions that he gave us. And all of the teaching and all of the teaching of the apostles, you ought to have some revelation by now to be able to pick up what Jesus told you to do and, to, and go do it. And quit, and quit being scared. I, I know I found it. I had to, I, that's, where I, that's what I found. I had to stop being scared. I just had to go do it. Because God put me in the position to do it. I have, what am I going to do? Say, I don't know. I'm scared. I don't know. 
Listen. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there. This, I'm reading John 20, 19, NLT. Jesus was standing there among them. So he says, peace be with you. You know, I was interested when I was reading this. I said, oh, wow. He didn't rebuke them because they were scared. Well, he knew they were scared. He knew they didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. So it didn't bother him. They're scared. People still scared. They were scared. Look at that. I, I thought when I read, I said, oh, yeah. So he didn't notice he did not rebuke them because they were scared. They were scared. He said, as he spoke, he said, peace. That's the first thing he said because they're scared. He said, peace be with you. He said, as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands. And his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace, because they got to get they scared. They were scared. You got to get you got to get, get that fear out of there. So he said, he said, peace again. Peace be with you. Now notice this is power here. Let Jesus be your trainer. When you go in a situation. Drive the devil, just drive the devil away from him. Call peace. That's exactly what he did. He came in and they scared. Mm -hmm. They were scared. Scared. And what the first thing he did was drove, drove, just drove fear out. What did he say when he came in there? Peace. 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 And then a little residue of, of fear kept hanging around. He said that again. Peace. peace. Good God Almighty. Jesus spoke. And when I speak and say peace, the same thing has to happen. You better know that. Amen. And don't be afraid to do it. That's what he said. I'm sending you to listen, listen, listen. He said it again. Peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hand and in his side. They were filled with joy. And then he said it again. He said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Now listen to this very carefully. This is what he just did what you and I are supposed are sent out to do right now. Because people are scared. Everywhere you go, people have been scared. Right. When you go on a scene, the scene, don't you get scared with them. Right. You do exactly what Jesus did because watch this. He said, I'm sending you the same way I'm sent. What did I do when I walked in there and see they were scared? I drove it out. The first thing I did, I drove it out. You're going to have to do the same thing. You hear me? Your interaction with people, whomever God interacts you with, because you're going to be talking to somebody. And you're going to be talking to somebody that's scared too. You better decide what you're going to do. And if you qualify yet, or you're going to be one of the scared ones. You understand? I'm, people, I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not talking about last week. I'm not talking about the past. I'm not talking about the future. I'm talking about now. This is where you are living right now. Because the same way you, you are supposed to be on this earth the same way Jesus was when he was on the earth. Amen. He said, but that was Jesus. This is you or you. And where do you live? I'm in Christ. You've been quoting it. That's right. They ain't going to have to act like it. And so he said, listen to that, and listen to this, as he spoke, you know, these, you know as, the, as the Father sent me, as the Father has sent me, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Now watch this, watch this, watch this authority, watch it, it's going to elevate. Are you ready for this? Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So you probably ask, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Everybody, yeah, I, I received the Holy Spirit. Okay, good, 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 good. Good, because you're going to need him. You're going to need him. If you forgive anyone's sin, they're forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they will not be forgiven. Now, don't start backing up now. Don't start back. You've been running everything. You've been walking fast every Don't start backing up now. Because that authority has been given to you. You can say that you can run if you want to, you can take it and use it. See, see, there is an authority. I'm telling you, you most you don't know what you have. You are walk, you are Jesus walking on this earth. Praise God. That's what you are. 
They got on, they got mad at Jesus. He told the guy, sin was forgiven. They got, on, they got mad as a wet chicken. He said, what do you mean? What are you getting mad at me for? You remember that? He told the guy, sin was forgiven him. And they got mad about it. They're going to get mad at you too. You're going to have to decide what you're going to do. I'm, I'm just giving it to you up front. I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing exactly what he told Peter to do. In the next chapter of Jesus, he told Peter, you better feed them people and tell them the truth. And that's what I'm doing to you. Now, whether you, if you receive it and do it, then fine. But I'm, I'm directed by the head of the church to tell you this. This is not the only place he says something like this that's outlandish. Watch this. Look at, look at, flip back to Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. See, this is, see you, you better under, you got to understand, this is you. This is, this, is your, this is your portrait. This is you. I tell you the truth. Verse 18, Matthew 18, 18. I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Yes. Pray, you should pray. But this is not talking about praying here. Right. This is right. after prayer. Right. Right. Now you get up and you go out and you command and yeah. demand. Mm -hmm. that, that, this is, no, no, people, this is where we are. This is, now, if you and I are never going to operate in this, then what in the world Jesus leave it here for us for? And, 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 and this time, well, well, I'm just waiting. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. You better, you better get there. Because you're not all in the young. No, 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 really, we procrastinate a lot. We don't realize it. We don't realize it. And we mentally procrastinate. Hmm, one of these days I'm going to, When? When? I look around this room, most of us, you, you should be peeking out and heading down the hill. <laughs> peeking. So when are you going to start? You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, no, but the procrastination thing. You know, one of these days, one of these days, no, no. You know, you, you, don't need, you, you need to have your oil tank full of oil when the cold comes. You don't need to go have oil delivered after it gets cold. You <laughs> need the furnace running there. <laughs> you understand what we're saying? Amen. This is the church's finest hour for us to walk. And let me tell you something. You're going to have opportunity to do whatever has to be done. I know. I know. I get, it's every day with me. It's every day. You know, the only way you're going to not be able to do this is you stay here somewhere. And you, I know you're scared to do that. You ain't do that. Not saying you ain't crying, you ain't going nowhere and hide. <laughs> be ready. Amen. When God said, go, you better be ready. I, I know. And he catch you off guard sometimes. Yeah. Caught me off guard the other night. Yeah. But I don't have no choice. Yeah. What are you going to do? You, got, you have no choice. You know what this all is already. You already got the word. Right. Just go do what I told you to do. You understand, you, understand, you understand what we're talking about, see? But I have to tell you this because, see, God's not just raising. No, I'm supposed to tell you, you're the one going to be doing this. You're going to be doing this. You're gonna be do, you, I don't know who you know. I don't, meet, I don't interact with the people that you're going to be interacting with. The people that you're going to be interacting with, those are the people that God's going to get designed for you to tell what I'm telling you. I don't know. I don't know what you. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And don't stay home so it don't happen either. <laughs> Jesus knows what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna stay home. I, won't. I know I won't have to do this tomorrow if I stay. No. Amen. Do you understand? Do you understand what we're talking about here? Oh. See, that's why we get up, and we, that's why we. That's why we stay spiritually solid, locked in. We we we, we get up. That's that's one of the things that we, we do. We're here in the morning. You know, we, we're here and praying. You ought to be doing wherever you are. If you don't hear, if you're not here, you ought to be doing it wherever you are. You ought to be getting yourself solidified and built up. And then when you open those doors and go out, you ought to be razor sharp, ready to do whatever God has designated for you to do. And this is, I'm talking to every believer here. 
I'm not talking to just a handful of people. I'm Amen. talking to every believer, everyone they call on the name of Jesus, everyone that is in Christ. Because when Jesus says, when he said, I'm, this, as the Father has sent me, this is the way I'm sending you. Who is he talking about? He is talking about every one of his kids. Every one of them. Knowing the will of God, understanding, knowing what, what is the bottom line? What is the bottom line? Is the bottom line for people to just be, you know, just be destroyed? No. That's not what he wants. He wants people to repent. And if, and, 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 if, and if you don't interact with them in the proper way, you will drive them further than where they are. Don't you see the danger in that? God has sent you out with the rowboat to, 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 to rescue the lost, the drowning, and you go out and bring them back dead. I told you to go bring them in. And they wouldn't listen. Bam. <laughs> Come on. God's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing that any should be lost. He wants them to repent. He, he wants a love. He wants a love message presented to them that will cause them to fall down at the feet of Jesus and say, God, my God, what shall I do to be saved? You read it in the book of Acts. The jailer, Peter, John, I mean Paul, and Silas down in the Philippian jail, the warden in the falling at his feet because he was fulfilling his calling. God, what is that? He didn't just get the guards. He got the warden saved, the keeper of the prison. Got him born again, him and his whole house. Wow. He is a prisoner. He is in jail. Locked on the lockdown. In stocks. But the glory of God's all over that man. And the stocks couldn't hold him. The warden couldn't hold him. The very warden is dead in seat. Look, can you imagine when that Rumbling and settled, the warden is bowing at his feet. Wow. Dear wow. God, that's the kind of man I like. Wow. <laughs> Instead of griping and groaning and complaining about what they do to me. Mm. Are you ready for this Christian journey? I don't know if we're ready for it or not. Yes. But you see, you understand what we're talking about. We're not, this is the same church that you and I are in. It's the wow. same church. You know, you, you know, you don't know me. I can't take that. I can't take. That, I, can't take that, I can't take this, and I can't take that. No, you ain't. You haven't taken anything. You really haven't. You really haven't had anything. My point. I'm trying to stir us to lock, get locked into Jesus and just say, God, I, I just, I, 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 I'm with you. That's all. That's what. We're, that's all we're saying. And when you like that, when you do, then God will direct you. You don't have to, he, the, the, the plans and the maps is already laid out. Your tomorrow is laid out. The only, the only one that don't know anything about it is you, which is good, because if you knew, you'd duck it. Your tomorrow is already laid out. Jesus got your blueprint for tomorrow. Did you know that? You don't know who you're going to interact with tomorrow. But Jesus already know. Amen. Are you going to be ready Amen. to do what God wants you to do? Amen. And don't get so upset. Listen, it's not always, not always the, what we think the big stuff. It's not that. It's the little things. How did you treat that person by the coffee pot when you were down in Wawa? You understand? Amen. Don't be so busy trying to find some big stuff and you miss out on with the very purpose for you being there. We do that a lot. Looking for something big. And you miss what God sent you down there to do. God wants us to know this. This, I'm saying, people, I mean, we need to go out every day with an excitement. God, who are you going to help today? I just want to help somebody. God, who can we help today? 
somebody is, because these people are fearful, they're frightened, they're angry, they're frustrated. They don't know what to do. And I'm just, I'm, that, that's just in general. That's, that's beyond the, all the mess that's going on in the, in the air. Just people's lives are in shambles. People that seem like they're okay, they're not. They need you. They, they, they need you. They, 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 they need you. I met, a, I met a fellow in the shop right this afternoon. He said, oh, man, I needed you. I needed this. I ain't said that. I don't know what I said to him. I don't know, I don't know what I said to him. <laughs> but the guy just grabbed me. He was elated. He just, he just, he was just, he just got, got a jolt. He got a jolt. You understand what we're talking about? But we have got to be, we, but if, if we are not locked in and solidified and aware of what, then you're going to miss it. And you're going to be all in the wrong frame of mind, and you just, just and the devil will have you, or you, the devil will have your mind so quick you never know he didn't have it. He'd have you, he'd have you so far out there, have you so stewed up, have somebody do it, something, have you so twisted. But don't allow that. Go with purpose. Go with purpose. Go with purpose. God's called me for this hour. This is my time. This is my generation. I'm called to this generation. I'm called to this hour. This is, I was born for this hour. I was. I was. I, I was. I was born. I was born. I was born for this hour. You were born for this hour. What are you going to do? You're going you're to let it pass? No, I'm going to serve my generation. I'm going to serve my generation. Because I'm expecting a well done. Amen. I'm expecting Amen. a well done. Amen. And if I, in order to get a well done, there, there's going to be, needs to be some, some faithfulness along the way. Yes. Yes. It ain't about me. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't about me. It ain't, no, it ain't, forget that. It ain't about me. It ain't about no clout. It's not about that. It's about the kingdom. Praise God. God. God loves people. Amen. He loves people. Yes. Now you may not like him, but he does. <laughs> no, really, I'm telling you. But we, we know, we, we know, we, you know, we, you know how we're such selective we are. Yes. Mm, yes. And, it, and it's shameful yes. to be selective in who we really like. Mm. Like, what's with that? That's right. wow. God mm. loves. That he does not want, not one of them, not one, not a one, not one of them lost, not one of them lost, not one, not willing, he does not want any one to be destroyed. Isn't it, think about that, think about that. I mean, it may, it may be in your book, it may be some insignificant person, but not in God's book. Amen. They are special. Yes. Yeah, the guy that stands on the corner, yes. panhandling, mm -hmm. God wants him. Amen. You don't have a right to ride past with your nose up. Amen. Now, understand what we're talking about here? Yes. We're talking about loving and having compassion for people. And if you are in Christ, then you have the same compassion Amen. as Christ has. Amen. Anytime you find yourself operating out of character, you know you're not in Christ. Right. Know that. That's not Christ. He says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the only reason that people operate in sin and, 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 and acting all out of character is because they just don't know any better. They don't know. The only reason a boy going to walk down the street holding another boy's hand because he doesn't know any better. And God wants him saved. Amen. And you and I are the only thing that he has on this earth 
to reach out there and love them and tell them that Jesus loved them too. You understand what we're talking about? So you, you know, I know you, I'm a Christian, I'm a nice little Christian. no such thing as a nice little Christian. <laughs> you either in the trenches or you, you somewhere, I don't know where you are. You understand, you understand what we're talking about here? This is where we are. And if we're going to be effective, if we're going to maintain a standard in our culture, you're going to have to get in the ditch. I'll tell you right now. You have to roll up your sleeves, roll up your pant leg, whatever you need to do, and just get down in there and say, okay, God, let's get on with it. Let's, let's get it done. Because, see, you got, you got plenty of time to rest. Don't worry about it. You rest from your labor when it's over. You got so don't worry about the rest. Don't worry about doing it. Oh, I'm tired. No, 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 don't worry about it. We'll rest. We got time to rest. In fact, the truth of the matter, God has designed a system for us to rest as we go. That's right. Yeah. In fact, he called this time, this hour, entered into his rest. The rest is the joy and appreciation to be a part of this. That's the rest that I have. The joy. You know what it's like when you, when you really, when you do something well for someone? You know how, to, how wonderful that feels? When you do something for someone? Well, you can do it every day. That's the rest that God has given unto you. So this is, that's, that, that's how we maintain a standard of holiness in the middle of what seemingly to be all kinds of adversity. We maintain stability and we run our race, and we finish with joy. You ready to do this? Then bless God, let's get with it. Then let's, let's get with it. Let's, 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 let's get with it. Father, we thank you tonight for such encouragement, Father, from you. You encourage our hearts, Father. You're reminding us of what we have been called to do. And God... We, we, we really, we, we're ready. Yes, Lord. We understand that this is our hour. Uh -huh. this is, we, were, we were called. Yes. We were called for this very hour. And Father, we give ourselves unto you. Mm -hmm. You provided all of the necessary resources that's needed. Thank you. Everything Thank you, that's needed, you provided it Thank for you. us.